Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, if you are new here, I post post lifestyle and faith-based content here and I am a recent new mom. My baby is going to be a month old this next week and so I just want to share a little bit about mom life, what it's like being a first time mom and things like that. I just share wherever my life goes, I share that. I wanted to do a little video updating you guys on my postpartum experience and I had you write in on my Instagram into a little question box, just any questions that you guys had about postpartum, things like that. But first I'll just touch real quick on my, um, my experience like before I answer questions. Um, I'm going to do a dedicated birth story video and probably a podcast episode with my husband discussing like what birth was like, what my labor was like. And obviously I know that it's different for every person. It depends on how your labor went, how your body progressed, everything. Like where you labored, how fast your labor was, that all kind of factors into your postpartum experience. But I also think your pregnancy experience and, you know, like the behavior of your baby, your hormones, your mental state, your habits, your support system. There's so many things that factor into your postpartum experience. So um, just take everything I say with a grain of salt because my situation could be and probably is like completely different than yours. So it doesn't mean you'll have like the same experience. But um, I struggle with anxiety and depression and have for like the last six or seven years of my life. So I was very, very worried about postpartum, um, especially those early weeks. I was really worried that since I'm already someone who struggles in that area, that it would just like hit me like a ton of bricks. So I was very proactive during my pregnancy, did tons of research and tried to do what I know works for me to keep me in a positive mind space and I tried to talk to everybody in my life and kind of prepare them for like signs that I know I see in myself when I'm slipping down a hole and just wanted everyone to be kind of prepared so that is something that I did um I just knew I wanted to have habits in place during pregnancy that would set me up to where I'm in a good headspace when I deliver because then the odds of me staying in a good headspace were higher so um, my labor was hard. It was really hard. I did an unmedicated birth at a birth center and I had a water birth. It was really hard. It was the most beautiful, best experience in the entire stinking world. I would do it 10 times over, um, especially to have this little guy. Um, but it was hard and I thought, and I thought for sure when I pushed him out, I was on my hands and knees in the tub. And if you've had a kid before, you may know, like when you're pushing, it feels like everything down there just shredded. Like you're like, okay, nothing's ever going to be the same. I definitely just ripped from a V to my B, you know? So I thought for sure when they got me out of the tub to check me that I, they would be saying like, yeah, you have a fourth degree tear, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't tear at all. Very, very blessed. Okay. I have no idea how that happened. I mean, I did all the cliche things they say to prevent tearing, but I also think it helped that I was in control of my labor. They didn't tell me when to push. I pushed when my body told me to, and I think that that helps, but I didn't tear. So my postpartum experience as far as healing was a lot different because I didn't have stitching. I didn't have burning when I peed. Um, I only had like a small hematoma, an internal one, and that healed within like a couple days. It just felt like a lot of pressure. And so I also had like significantly less bleeding, I think. Um, no matter how your labor goes, if you have a cesarean or if you tear or if you don't tear, you're going to bleed, okay? Because the bleeding is from your placenta detaching. It leaves like a big wound and you're bleeding from all of that. Um, so yeah, the first 24 hours postpartum, I was sore, um, but that was about it. There was like pressure down there. And so all the products that I had bought, I bought thinking that I was going to have stitching. So I didn't use as many as the products as I thought that I would, um, but I definitely used them and I can go over that later. I got skin to skin for like 40 minutes in the tub with him and that was 
immediately after he came out and I think that that had a huge factor in my hormones balancing and just feeling really good um, and that first night home I felt so at peace and I was really worried that the first night home would be nothing but like anxiety checking his pulse every few seconds and um, I was just really worried that that would be how my body and my mind would adjust because I actually got to go home six hours after giving birth. I was in my bed. Um, but that wasn't the case at all. I felt really at peace and like it was just where I needed to be in life and that he was where he needed to be. And um, I just trusted that God would help us figure it out over the next few days. I, so I bled heavily probably the first like four days I wore those adult diapers and then every day since I've been on just like normal pads that you would wear for your cycle and I'll have days where I don't bleed at all and then I do too much like I'll clean the whole house or play spike ball or go on a walk because I think I feel normal and then my body reminds me like you just had a baby a couple weeks ago you need to chill so um yeah and the swelling and all of that wasn't too bad for me. I just used a couple of those Freedom Mom ice pads. Um, I just did a lot of sitting, nursing, resting those first, probably like the first week and a half and then I felt really good and I had to tell myself to rest. But I want to start answering some questions because otherwise I feel like I'm going to blab on and I do, like I said, want to do like a more in-depth um, podcast on this. So, um, postpartum must have products. A lot of you guys asked about those. Um, the Freedom Mom Perry bottle, I used that the first few days just because I had so much pressure down there that wiping with toilet paper just sounded really uncomfortable. But I know if you have stitching, it's extremely important to use a Perry bottle. Um, so I had the Freedom Mom one that has like the angled nozzle, makes it a lot, um, easier. You just fill it with warm water, spray down there. Keeps you nice and clean. I still, I still use it occasionally just because when you're wearing pads and diapers, you know, you just want to be extra clean. So those, the ice pads from Freedom Mom. Um, I used Earth Mama Perennial Spray just for the cooling um, the first like week. And now I've just been using these Always pads. I'll put the picture on the screen. I don't know why I never knew about these. I'm not a pad girl. I actually use menstrual cups, but for right now, obviously you can't do that. And these pads, I would have loved them in high school before I knew about menstrual cups. Um, they are so absorbent. You don't have to worry about leaking, especially with postpartum. They're really discreet and I love them. I don't know how I never knew about them. I got my placenta encapsulated and I've been taking those every day and I do firmly believe that that is a huge reason that I have felt as stable emotionally as I have. Um, it could be placebo, but if it is, I don't care because it's working. I did a lot of supplementing and a lot of tea. So I did fennel, ashwagandha, alfalfa, um, just a bunch of herbal teas and I have been taking an alfalfa supplement like the last trimester of pregnancy and till now because alfalfa is super rich in vitamin K which can help um, your blood clot and help pr hopefully prevent hemorrhaging but also just good to keep your body healthy and it's full of antioxidants um, and yeah I did a lot of tea tons of water tons of coconut water eating fruits and vegetables um, keeping up with like a healthy lifestyle has helped a lot with postpartum but um I did buy a belly ba belly binder like a belly band and I thought that I would need or want that um but, but since I'm breastfeeding my uterus like really shrunk and um I didn't feel the need for that I didn't have too much ab separation but if you have tons of ab separation or like your belly just what is much bigger much more swollen or maybe you're not breastfeeding belly binders can be great for helping your uterus shrink down but also just for support in the middle of the night when you need to sit up and grab your baby to breastfeed because your abs are so sore and they're separated um but i haven't used mine um and yeah i think those are all of the products that i have used something you were not prepared for <laughs> um I did not expect the night sweats. Like, 
at all. So they only lasted like the first week postpartum, but I'm talking, I woke up drenched in sweat. My, you have to sleep in a bra if you're breastfeeding for one, cause your boobs are so engorged, you're leaking milk. Um, you don't want to get it all over your bed and it's just like uncomfortable to not wear one. So I was sleeping in a bra and I would wake up and have like pools of sweat in my bra. My sheets would be soaked, my pillowcase would be soaked. That may not happen to everyone and it may be gross to you, but it happened to me and I would wake up every morning and be feeding him and I would just be dying for a shower. Like it was just the most horrible smell of sweat. Like you're just purging, your body's getting rid of all that extra fluid you hold on to during pregnancy. Oh my gosh, I wanted to shower so much and it's hard because those first few days postpartum, you're learning so much and your baby just wants to be with you and you wanna be with them and you don't have a schedule yet. And it's hard to get those showers in. <laughs> um, so I was not prepared for the night sweats. Um, thankfully, they're gone. I don't have those anymore and everything's kind of leveled out. I also was not prepared for the engorgement for breastfeeding. My milk came in on day two. Um, which I thought for sure, I was like, this is not happening. Most people say it takes like five, six days, three to six days for your milk to come in. I woke up on day two and my boobs were huge. And I was like, what the heck? And they were so engorged that when he would try to feed, it would just like choke him because my letdown was so fast and so much. So I was not prepared for that either, but something that helped was I would just pump like maybe for one minute on each side before I would feed him those first five to six days of my milk being in and I did save that milk but it would help like slow down like get rid of the letdown milk and just kind of give him the f the hind milk which is like the fatty milk um and it didn't like choke him as much um so yeah I was not prepared for all of that and just like how how much goes into breastfeeding like you're on the clock all the time i've enjoyed it so far i love it um i love it so far but it's just like you're always on the clock you've mentioned struggling with mental health in the past has postpartum worsened your anxiety um there's a lot of questions about that how are your emotions doing all of that um i like i said you guys that was my biggest concern i knew that i would be able to take care of my baby but I wasn't sure how I would be feeling mentally. And I feel, I would say like nine out of 10 most days, sometimes 10 out of 10. There have been a couple moments where I feel like a five out of 10 and I have to cry in the shower, but that's just when there's something going on with him and I can't figure out what's wrong and I feel bad for him or, um, you know, there's just ebbs and flows. I think what's helped a lot is having the mindset that he is new I'm new, we both are very new to this. He's learning, I'm learning, so I can't expect everything to be perfect. And he's gonna be a different baby every day. So if he has a day where he's fussy all day, it doesn't mean I need to wake up tomorrow and like not look forward to the day because he might be a different baby tomorrow. And just taking it moment by moment and really soaking it in. But I, I don't know, there's so many factors I think that have helped me just be in a good space. I've prayed more than I have ever prayed and just like really kept in touch with the Lord and like relied on him each day to give me exactly what I need to get through. Um, I set myself up by making sure I stayed active. We've been taking walks every day, getting outside in the sun, um, still keeping up with a nutritious diet, um, taking time each day for a shower and listening to music, doing things that I love, putting makeup on, changing my clothes, um, I have a ton of support from my friends and family, my mom, my friends, my husband, everybody has been so supportive. So I firmly believe that that's why I'm doing as well as I am. Um, but yeah, I was worried because as someone who struggles mentally, I thought for sure it would just hit me like a ton of bricks. But I think if you already try to manage your anxiety in some way, shape, or form pre to pregnancy. Um, just be really proactive and fight for your mental health after pregnancy and during. Um, just make sure that you're being active, actively doing things to prevent it from worsening because if you just do nothing, it will hit you like a brick wall. <laughs>
Is your belly back to the way it was pre-pregnancy and how did it how did you take to seeing it change? Um, it's not the way it was pre-pregnancy. I can show you. It's just, uh, I don't know. Like, I have some squish. I still have my linea negra, which is that hormonal dark line that goes down your belly. <laughs> it's kind of funny looking. Um, but yeah, I've got some chub on there. Like, some, I've got some squish. It's definitely squishier than it has ever been. Um, it shrunk a lot more than what I had expected. I was expecting it to stay pretty pregnant for like a while, but like I said, breastfeeding helps your uterus contract a lot and shrink back down to size. I also stayed active during my pregnancy. Um, I worked out my whole nine months of pregnancy, but I was working out beforehand, so I just continued with that. And I only gained 20 pounds during my pregnancy, and I'm Back to pre-pregnancy weight, but my body is just different. It looks way different. Like, I've lost so much muscle mass from breastfeeding. Um, everything's squishier than it was before. I have put no pressure on how my body, like, looks because you just, you just need to take care of your baby in those first, like, weeks. You don't, you shouldn't be worried about what your body looks like at all. And of course it's going to look different. You just did an amazing thing. Is it really hard dealing with recovering and adjusting to a newborn at the same time? The first couple days were really hard for me, but I didn't sleep the three days leading up to me giving birth. I didn't sleep the night I came home from giving birth. Like maybe I slept two hours. Um, he had a tongue tie that we didn't know about, so that caused a lot of issues those first couple nights. Um, and then I didn't sleep for like two days after we brought him home. So I was on like five days of no sleep and I was literally starting to hallucinate. My body was really weak and sore and to recover from labor and delivery, you need to be resting and sleeping. But I couldn't and I wasn't and I went to my two day appointment and my midwife, she literally looked me in the eyes and she was like, if you do not sleep, you are going to get postpartum depression. Like, that is the number one trigger and thing that puts people into it. You need to sleep. And that's a lot easier to say to someone than it is to do. But I tried to find chunks where I could. I would take random one-hour naps when I could throughout the day. Um, Austin would try to get up, like, when after I would feed him for the first feed in the morning. Austin would take him. I would sleep for two hours. Things have leveled out now. I'm getting like two to three hour stretches at a time and probably a total throughout the night of like six hours of sleep, seven hours of sleep. Sometimes I take a nap if I can. Um, but that made adjusting to newborn life and recovery really hard because my body was not going to recover until I started to get a little bit of sleep. Like I was just, oh, I was in a daze those first few days. Um, so yes and no, it's hard to adjust to newborn life, especially if you're not sleeping, which you probably won't be, but it's just, you do what you gotta do. It's amazing how like um, resilient women are and babies are. Everything's new to them, everything's new to you, but you just figure it out, you know? You just do it and you don't have time to think, oh, this is hard and I can't do it in those first few days. You're just like, okay, I'm a mom, let's do this thing. <laughs> um, so it is hard to adjust. I will say, um, I could see like if you had a cesarean, you need to have people staying with you to help you because you probably are having a hard time lifting your baby. The recovery of a cesarean is so hard. Um, so that recovery would be so challenging, or if you had like a fourth degree tear, I could see it being so challenging. There's obviously differences, like my, my body wasn't in as much trauma as some people experience. Did the birth center do a fundal massage on you after birth, and did it seem very aggressive? I think that this is where, in hospitals, they push on your stomach <laughs> to deliver your placenta. That did not happen for me. I think it needs to happen sometimes if maybe your uterus is so worn out and it can't contract to naturally like push your placenta out, but we actually went over this in our birth classes that they don't do that and that it can be a really traumatizing thing for a lot of women who deliver in hospitals is that they just immediately start pushing on your stomach to get that thing out of you. 
um, at the birth center, what they did for me is they watched me, obviously, to make sure that I was not hemorrhaging right away and I was doing well. So they were like, okay, we're going to give you like 30 minutes and if you start to feel contractions, let us know so we can help you push out your placenta. And I don't know how many minutes went by. I was in like la la land holding my baby, just loving life. Um, but I did eventually feel like the need to push and she came over and kind of helped me get my placenta out. I'm really glad they didn't do that. Maybe a couple times as I was sitting in bed, like feeding him, eating my meal and stuff, the hours leading up to us going home, they would come in and like feel my stomach just to check on how far down my uterus had shrunk because it needs to shrink a certain amount in a certain amount of time that first like few hours. That's really important. And so if it's not shrinking, they need to be checking it. So they would come in and like feel but it was never like aggressive massaging. I've heard really some horror stories about that. Do you have help from your mom and mom-in-law? Yes, I do. My mom comes over whenever. <laughs> if I call her, she's here. And if I need my mother-in-law, she's here. And they've been making food, cleaning my house. It's, it's been great. The first few days, was it just you and your husband with the baby and how was that? Um, originally we wanted no visitors, like we told everyone to not expect to meet him for at least the first week, but then once we had him, our minds very quickly changed. So the, at my birth, my mom was there. I didn't originally want her, I didn't originally think I wanted anyone there. She was there and I'm so glad she was. It was my mom and my husband. We came home that night, my mom got to hold him, um, and then we had his mom stop by for five minutes and she held him. We had the night to ourselves. Um, the next day, my dad met him. We had the rest of the day to ourselves. People only stayed for like five to 10 minutes those first few days of meeting him, and it was only my parents, his parents, and that was it. Those were the only people that met him in the first like week. Um, and we just really were selfish with our time those first few days, because Austin only got two, three days off of work. <laughs> And then he had to go back. So we were very selfish with those days. And also, like, I don't think that there's a need for everyone to be in your business those first few days. Like, you go through so much as a new mom and delivery and all of that. And you're sleep deprived. You don't need to be worrying about hosting people or anything. But if you feel like you want to, do it. So, yeah, we soaked up as much time as possible. And we still do that on the weekends. Like, we're pretty... Um, we keep it pretty minimal with visitors throughout the week and we pretty much have no one on the weekends because Austin has the weekends off and we just like to soak in our family time and I'm really glad that we did that. Um, I know you said you didn't tear during delivery. Did you take any preventative measures? Tons of questions on that. Healing down there, tips to not tearing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so the, the cliche things I did during pregnancy to not tear, um, I drank raspberry leaf tea every single day of my third trimester. I would have started in my second trimester, but I was too scared because Google scared me out of it and my midwives were like, no, you definitely can. So I had raspberry tea, I ate dates every day, and I took Epsom salt baths almost every single night. And that can help with softening your skin. A couple other things you can do, you can do a perennial massage. I didn't do those, I was too chicken and just like, too drained. Um, sex helps and I think you can do, you can also have your nurses and midwives, you can ask them to do perennial massages during labor. Um, I didn't, I didn't even think about it, but I know that you can do that. Um, but I honestly think it comes down to, you know, like the speed of your baby coming out of you. Like he came at a really good rate. It wasn't like a fast aggressive labor. It was a slow progressive labor. So it's not like contractions, boom, your baby came out with no control. My body was able to loosen up as it needed to. And I also gave birth on my hands and knees. Um, that's just like what my body told me to do. That's what I wanted to do. And I think that that helped with me like not pushing too hard and I gave birth in the tub. And I know that a lot of people say water births help with that. 
And then lastly, I pushed when my body said to push, not when a doctor or a nurse was like, okay, let's push. If I didn't feel the need to push, I was not pushing. Heck no. So if I could give you any advice, if they're telling you to push and you don't feel the need to push, obviously if you have the epidural, it may be different because you may not feel those urges. But if you don't feel the need to push, don't push. I think that not having a hospital birth and doing it naturally helped you heal faster and have a faster birth. Um, Come on, baby. I'm gonna have to eat soon. Um, so I definitely, definitely think that having a birth center birth <laughs> helped me have a natural birth. Like I think that had I been in a hospital environment, I may have felt a little bit more pressure or may have felt like I wasn't as confident in my ability to do it naturally because all those interventions are there and they offer it to you repeatedly. So I think that helped with that. But yes, I think having a natural birth and having it in the birth center helped me heal faster because a natural birth, um, sometimes you can have like, you know, trauma from your epidural. You can have back pain, you can have headaches. There's tons of different side effects. I'm not hating on an epidural at all, I at all. But I know that you can have side effects and we did our, a lot of research and decided that with like some of the stuff that I already have, I already have back pain, I already get migraines. I didn't want to get an epidural and risk that complicating it even more. Um, so I didn't have any post-birth complications or post-birth side effects from interventions like that. And um, also I wanna say I healed faster mentally from delivering in a birth center and doing it naturally because I personally knew that if I was gonna deliver in a hospital, I would probably have like a lot more postpartum anxiety and just trauma because hospitals already give me anxiety. I have severe white coat syndrome. My blood pressure is record, like sky high whenever I get it taken at a doctor's office because I get anxiety. I don't know why. So just being in a hospital environment with all the beeping monitors, the different people switching shifts, different people being in the room that I'm not familiar with, I'm not comfortable with, um, different policies they have in place, and just the environment not being calm. Like I wanted dim lighting, my music, essential oils, the freedom, the freedom to move as much as I wanted. Um, you can't really have as much of that in a hospital setting and that's just what I needed. And um, I definitely think that helped me personally recover mentally because my birth was very calm. And I'm not hating on hospital births whatsoever because some people love giving birth in a hospital and that's just where they feel safest and that's great and just a little bit different. Yeah. I wouldn't have been mad if we ended up in a hospital though. How have your energy levels? <laughs> here, here baby. How have your energy levels been? Uh, first few days you're running on adrenaline so you feel just amazing even though you're not sleeping at all. But then, as I said, like day three, it all caught up to me. I was like hallucinating from lack of sleep. Couldn't think clearly, so that was rough. But now, uh, my energy is like surprisingly pretty good throughout the day. Once it gets around five o'clock and it's getting closer to my night shift, as I call it, of breastfeeding, I start to get really tired. I do have like one cup of coffee a day. Helps, but my energy has been really well and I think that that is a huge factor from me keeping up with my vitamins that I took during pregnancy. I still take all my bento. Um, I've been making sure I get plenty of vitamin D, um, napping when I can if possible. That doesn't happen very often, but coffee helps. My placenta pills, my placenta pills have been helping keep my energy up and yeah, my energy has been pretty good, but I will say I'm a person who like can function on like six hours of sleep. I do okay on that. But like people like my husband, he can't function on anything less than eight. So <laughs> I think it just depends on the person. What is easier than expected and what's harder than expected? Um, easier than expected is just like for me, the transition from 
not having a child to having a child. Like I thought it would feel so bizarre and it just feels right to me. And I'm really, really thankful that I feel that way because I know that that's not the case for everyone. And what's harder than expected is getting normal, simple tasks done. And I mean like simple tasks, like filling up your water bottle or going to the bathroom or taking a shower. Those things are harder to accomplish. Oh, you pooping. You pooping. Yeah. Those things are harder to accomplish now. Like I will sit down to breastfeed and um, all of a sudden Bean's ringing the bell to go outside, his food bowl's empty, I need to go to the bathroom, my water's empty and I'm so thirsty and you just like really can't do much, you know, when you're strapped to a chair feeding a baby. The first poop and pee after birth. Uh, this was a shocker, I, I am shocked. I couldn't pee, I hadn't peed like I was in labor from 2 a.m. until I delivered at 1.15 p.m. the next, like, that day. And I hadn't peed. The nurses were, or the midwives were keeping track of when I would use the bathroom. And I hadn't peed since 10.30 a.m. And after I delivered, I, I probably went another two hours till I felt the urge to pee. And they kept trying to get me to. I would sit down and I just couldn't. Like, you have so much pressure down there and you can't really feel it anymore. And everything's swollen and it's really really important that you pee after you give birth so I don't know what the what they would have done had I not but they were trying a couple things and then finally she was like okay this is our last attempt like I'm gonna go grab some peppermint oil to drop into the toilet and like see if it helps or whatever and as she walked away to get the peppermint oil I finally peed it burned that first pee burned but that was about it it was just really hard to pee I was like dude why can I not feel the urge to pee? First poop postpartum. I was terrified. Terrified. <laughs> this is why they tell you to keep up with probiotics and take fiber, eat a nutritious diet. I was terrified that like it was going to be hard. It wasn't bad. Do you think that the love for baby makes everything easier? Yes. Yes, I do. That's as many questions as I can get through. My camera's actually dying, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll continue to share about postpartum and try to be as real as I possibly can be because I know things will change the next couple months and it's not all going to be sunshines and rainbows and it hasn't been, but I just wanted to share a positive perspective on postpartum and birth and baby life because I feel like it gets a bad rap, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you go out of your way today to love on someone and make them feel extra special because they are. And we will catch you guys in the next video. You waking up.